How are you today? I'm so happy to have you. Hey, I'm so everybody. excited to be here. Hi. Do we have some PLLers in this room? Yes, raise right your hand. Right there. Oh, hey, hi. Oh, yeah, you told me you were going to be here. That's so cool. We met on Good Morning America. Cool. She's going to become an actress, so at some point we can turn the camera on her. Oh, that's this is awesome. Gonna be her moment. What's your name? Welcome, Paige. Welcome, everybody. Thanks for being here, and thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to talk about, well, now it's the final nine episodes, because we I saw know. one on Tuesday. Yeah. Um, happy but sad. An it end is. of an era. It is. It is. It's totally bittersweet. Um, I, and, and that's what, you know, as we were discussing in the other room, like, I'm super excited to share these last nine episodes with the fans. Like, so excited. Like, I don't understand why we have to wait every Tuesday to share them with you. Um, but at the same time, I also am really, I'm really sad because then once it's done, it'll be done. Yeah. Yeah. How's it been for you? This is like your final press tour. I saw you with all the girls in New York mm -hmm. City. Um, is it, is it going to be hard for you to say goodbye or is it a little bit more exciting and, and. I think it's more that it, it is truly the end of an era. You know, it's like I, we, me and Ashley and Shay were like in the car and we were driving around and we were kind of like, wow, we have been coming to New York for seven years, having way too much fun. And then, and then we leave and then we go back to LA and then we start shooting. And it's really crazy that we will never be back in New York all together again promoting the show and then have to leave and go back and, and shoot, you know what I mean? It's, it's one of those things now where it's like, I'm, I have no doubt that I'm gonna see everybody and hang out with everybody, but it will never be under the same circumstances. Yeah. yeah. Well, did everyone watch Tuesday night's episode? Man, it's setting you up. You did? Okay, cool, so there's no spoilers. Yeah. Setting I'm up alive. Good uh -huh. <laughs> I know, I was nervous there. I was like, she's coming to build. I hope she survives this episode. I know, right? That would be a very different and somber mood. I was like, well, I died. <laughs> is it hard for you over the past seven years um, to keep the secrets of the show? Because now you kind of know what happens. Oh, my um, God. Yeah, it's the worst. And I know Marlene's pretty tough on you guys being very it's, it No, it's self-inflicted. Because you don't want to ruin it for people. Like, I have all the, like, so many times over these past seven years, people were like, who's A? And I was like, first of all, you don't want me to tell you. <laughs> because that would ruin everything. Yeah. And even if I told you, you wouldn't believe me. But it is true that, like, all the time, like, um... What was the thing that most recently happened? Like, I'm even afraid right now to like go over, but like there was some spoiler and it was 100% out. Mm -hmm. It was out in public, like they had aired last, uh, like this past summer. And then we were revisiting it when we were talking about what had happened. And I think one of us thought that it was a spoiler and like we all went beet red. It was like uh, uh, the pregnancy, right? The pregnancy, yeah. yeah. See, like I didn't even want to bring it up because I was afraid it still hadn't happened. Yeah. Um, and so we all like just kind of stared at each other and we're like, Oh, did we just did we just seriously mess up? And then I, and then it was like the audience member that had to be like, no no no, it's fine. We know that Allie's pregnant. We we're like, oh god, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, Allie's pregnant, which is has caused some other theories to be launched I online about like theories. maybe it's Emily's eggs that were implanted into Allison by I mean, A. Have you heard Rosewood is in, no yeah I know I've heard <laughs> all the theories. I love all the theories and like they all are equally plausible because Rosewood is insane. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I've heard theories that like Pam Fields is A. Oh and I'm like, it could happen in a world. Who is A? Just, you know I now. just told you, you don't want me to tell you. Were, are you listening? Well, you don't you, want me to tell you this. Were, were you happy with who you found out who A was when you found out? Were you like satisfied with that? Will fans be satisfied or is it a complete shock or is it something that can you imagine if I told you right now, like, no, I was really pissed, actually. I would love it, because then people would be like, I need to know even more. <laughs> really? Why she's pissed. Okay, um, well, I think the good thing is that when I went, actually, it was, it was funny, it was a really long night shoot between Keegan and I, and I was so tired of not knowing, and I think it was like season five or something, so we still had two years, we knew that we had two years, but I was just like so annoyed and frustrated. As a person on the show, like, I cannot even imagine how frustrating it would be to be a fan. I was so annoyed that I cornered Marlene and I was like, Marlene, you are gonna tell me the ending of this series and you are gonna tell me now. And she was like, well, I, I don't, like, I've pitched it to them, but like, I don't even know if they'll go for it. And I was like, I don't care. I just need, I need something to go on because I'm dying over here. Yeah. Um, and so she was like, you really wanna know? And I was like, yes. And then of course Keegan was like eating chips and he was like, wait, what are you talking about? Um, and uh, Keegan will appreciate that impersonation of him because it's so <laughs> accurate. Um, so. We, so Marlene kind of like, we called it story time with Marlene and in between this, the takes of that scene, she sat Keegan and I down and she told us the whole story that she had planned for the next two years. 
including other characters. And it was, it was amazing. It was like being told like a fun, scary story by like your camp counselor, you know what I mean? Cause she, she had thought about details and she had thought about like all these twisted back, you know, these like back alley connections and like, and yeah, I was, I was super, super excited when I heard because I, I just felt like it was the perfect ending for this mystery. And I felt like it was something that the fans would always, would be really, really excited by, you know? Mm -hmm. I'm excited. Yeah. Now, did I'm that, really excited. Did I'm that like, help you kind of, because it must be hard when you don't really know what the end goal is. Did that, you know, information kind of inform you and your character in the, in the final few seasons? Because I'm sure it's hard to play mm -hmm. Spencer when you kind of don't know what might happen in the future. Well, and that's the thing, you know, it's like, and I feel so bad for some of the poor guest stars because they always come in and they're like, they're like asking us, they're like, am I evil? Like, do you think I'm bad? And I'm like, dude, I don't know. They don't tell me anything. Um, you know, I, I think we all, all of the, like the girls and I, the liars, like we all like to know a little bit more so that we really can play into the surprise of it. You know, it's like, I'm trying to think of an example. You know, it's, it's, like, it's like the original, the Mona storyline. Yeah. It's like, we kind of wanted to know that that's where Mona was going. And Janelle wanted to know that that's where Mona was going so that she could totally not play into it. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and so that Hannah could, could get close to her without being suspicious of her because you want that surprise to be there for the girls. Yeah. So I personally like to know, I mean, Ashley Benson loves to be surprised. <laughs> Uh, which is always a delightful moment in the in the table reads when literally like it's like it's like Hannah walks in a room and is like cold clocked, you know what I mean? And she's like, what? And I'm like, did you not read this? <laughs> yeah, when did you guys get the scripts before each episode? Um, was it one of those, like I know on the set of Scandal, they can't really read the upcoming scripts because they like to keep everything a secret for the cast. Was that the yeah. same for you guys? All right, so here's how it worked. <laughs> and it was tough. Um, you get the script, I mean, this happens on most tele network television shows or, or cable too, um, where they don't r write it all out in months in advance. Um, you get the script the day before you start shooting, essentially. So, sorry, you get the script one day before, so you get it on like a Tuesday night, you have a table read during your lunch uh, in between shooting the last episode, when the network and the studio get to hear it and put any final notes that they want. And then, so that'll be like Wednesday, and like on Thursday, you'll start shooting that episode. So generally, you would only get to know what was happening to your character with 24 hours of notice, or 48 at the most, which was a lot. It was a doozy, you know what I mean? It's like all of a sudden, like, I don't know, uh, you know, Spencer like is water skiing in this episode, you know, and you're like, oh God, I hope I know how to water ski. <laughs> um, so it was, it was a fast turnaround. So what the girls used to do is the crew had to get scripts because props would have to know what props to get. Mm -hmm. You know, like hair and makeup would need to know if there was like an epic crying scene, you know, I'm gonna need to reset your makeup like, you know, all the time. Or if there's like an ice ball, like it's gonna be a big look for costume. So they would always get it ahead of us. And then we would sit in the makeup chairs and secretly read it. Yeah. Um, but we had to be sworn to secrecy because all the time, the poor, poor Aaron makeup would get into trouble because we'd go and we'd be like, I don't really think that my character would do that in the next episode. And of course, like everybody in the studio would be like, come on, <laughs> like you can't keep on sharing that. Well, even like the most recent one when you're like, oh, Spencer shot. Did you see that in the makeup room? And you're like, oh, they're gonna have to do all that. What's gonna happen to me? What's gonna happen yeah, to me on this it, episode? Well, it was interesting because I didn't get the call that was like, enjoy your free time. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, so I did know, you know, I didn't know to what extent Spencer would be like in a hospital for a long time or something like that. So I knew that I wasn't going anywhere, but I, it was a pretty big shock. Yeah. So let's talk about Spencer's storyline on these final nine episodes. Yeah, let's. We saw a little reveal that Mary Drake is your mom. She says. Says she's your mom. Well, she says, and then actually my mom corroborates it, so she is. Yeah. See, I, I like, I can't even like keep like, up with how much. Like she says. <laughs> um, it's like that's stressful for me on my daily life. Um, yeah, so she um, she's my mom, and uh, and you heard Veronica Hastings tell the story about how I was brought into this world, and then I got the letter written on Radley Sanitarium paper that I was a baby born in a madhouse, um, and I was essentially born out of out of Mary Drake's wanting to punish the Hastings and the De Laurentis. It's like like what a what a what a crazy thing for a person to find out, you know what I mean? That 
I mean, first of all, it explains a heck of a lot with Jessica De Laurentiis. Like, I always felt like Jessica De Laurentiis was, like, super weird with Spencer and, like, kind of mean. And then you understand that, like, these families were so intertwined in so many weird, twisted ways that that now it's sort of like, I don't know, it's great, it's great that Spencer is actually getting some answers. Because yeah. I feel like she has felt like the black sheep of her family for so long, and now at least the world is like, well, you're not gonna like it, but you weren't wrong, yeah. you know? How does this affect her going forward with the final few episodes? Does Spencer change at all? Is she more, you know, now that she's more aware of her background? Well, I think it's ultimately going to, to depend on if Spencer really believes herself to be a Hastings and wants to continue forward in life. You know, her, her mother's go, you know, is in politics and she was helping her. It's like, is, is that important to her? Um, or is she a Drake? Is she somebody who has been in and out of mental institutions, which she has, and has been on the lam and has lived a life in secrecy and has, you know, blackmailed people. And, and I think she could be, she could really live in either world. And I think it's kind of, it's going to be up to her where she decides she feels the most comfortable. Yeah. And I have to ask about this crazy board game that you girls opened. Oh yeah, the uh, What is gonna happen with that? Are we, gonna, are we gonna play that board game and find out some secrets? Well, it turns <laughs> out Spencer already played it. Yeah, um, yeah that, was a, that, was a, that was a moment in which I felt pretty bad when like, all the other girls were like, yeah, we're definitely not gonna play this. And You're Spencer like, was did. like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> totally. Um, yeah, she opened, she opened up Pandora's box. I don't know what they could have avoided. I don't know how they could have gotten out of it, but there was a way out, and now Spencer's led them right down the rabbit hole, and now they have to see how far it goes. Oh my God, this is, this is creeping me out, guys. I need to know the <laughs> it, end it, of that Breaking That game is dangerous, yeah. let me tell you right now. It's way worse than anything we've ever dealt with. Oh, my God. Yeah. You guys have dealt with a lot. In I know. <laughs> Let's talk about you. what... Moment for you throughout the series has been like the craziest, most outlandish thing that when you read it, you were like, are we really gonna do this? Are we oh, really gonna go there? I got, we, we, it was funny. We, um, we used to make these videos. We found this shark, cause we were the Rosewood Sharks, right? So we had this like stuffed shark. And I think we made videos of the entire crew, like slow motion jumping over the shark. For those of you guys who don't know that phrase, it's when a TV show has jumped the shark, it's like, they're just like, they don't care about reality anymore. They're just like, whatever, like anything can happen in this world. Like this dude can get pregnant, whatever. <laughs> um, and I think Pretty Little Liars kind of jumped the shark like so crazy early on that we really had the freedom to go anywhere. So yes, there were moments like when Emily was locked in a box and it was on like a conveyor belt towards a buzzsaw, like Rocky and Bullwinkle, Bullwinkle style that I was like, nah. <laughs> Um, you know, or like, it was like so early though. It's like like the whole like Halloween train episode. The, but it's stuff like that that when I read it, I'm always like, guys, seriously, <laughs> really? Like Adam Lambert is gonna sing to us on a train? Like what is this episode? And then you see it and you're like, Adam Lambert sang to us on a train, this was awesome. You know what I mean? Like it, it always turns out really cool. And, and, and that's why I really love the writers so much because they did take us in crazy directions, but they always grounded it in an emotional reality. So to me, to answer your question, <laughs> long way around, um, the, the dollhouse for me was, was the top moment because I sort of got frustrated with the constant, like, we're living this life where we have boyfriends or girlfriends and like, we're making grades, even though we never do our homework. And- um, Go to school. Or go to school, <laughs> we just run around the woods in heels. Um, but but also we're being blackmailed and like and and mentally tortured and it was amazing when a kidnapped all of us uh, and put us in a bunker that looked exactly like our rooms and it was a living dollhouse and finally I was like oh this is what the show has been underneath the surface it was like we got, finally got to like rip the top layer off and say like we know you think you're, that we're just a teen soap but really we're this so it was kind of a freeing moment when we got to play these set of circumstances because. We no longer had to pretend anymore that we were just like going to school, like normal girls. It was like, no, this is gonna get crazy. This is the way it is. And I think that's why everyone loves Pretty Little Liars, right? It's for all that crazy stuff that happens and the murder mystery behind it all. Well, I think it is also because, look, high school is traumatic. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and, and bullying obviously is a very, very real trauma that people have to deal with. But I think the interesting thing is that for me, at least in high school, everything felt like life or death. 
You know what I mean? Like Tess, uh, if a boy liked you or didn't like you, you know, or asked you to the prom or whatever, like everything really felt like life or death. Your best friend not talking to you. It's the worst thing that could possibly happen. And so it's interesting to be on a show that's about high school that truly feels like you could live or die because I do think that that's something that our audience, like those are emotions that they experience. You know, Norman Buckley, one of our directors, always said to me, he said, you know, the circumstances on the show are fantastical, but the emotions are grounded. Because I was having a fit when, like, Janelle Parrish, when Mona came back to school, and I was like, this, I don't know if I can say bitch, but whatever, this bitch tried to kill me. She pushed me off the side of a mountain. Like, what? Why is she back in school? She was committed. She was crazy. And now I'm in science class with her again? Like, no. I was, like, having a fit on set. And Norman was like, no, this is the thing. That would never happen. But what happened if it did? Because that's what sometimes it feels like when you've gone through a fight with somebody and then you have to like partner with them in chemistry. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's, it's, I don't know, that's what I kind of always loved about the show. Yeah, Man, I love the show too. <laughs> Tell us what we uh, can expect from these final episodes. Any hints? Uh, I know you can't give away any spoilers, but really what can fans really look forward to? <laughs> she's down there, she's like, don't tell me anything. <laughs> um, I, I think that fans, Truly, and I know that we've ha we've ha honestly had to say this, there have been past seasons where like, I feel like we've been told, they're like, tell them that they're gonna get answers. And I'm like, no, because yeah. they won't. Never get they, an yeah, yeah, and it's gonna be frustrating and I'm not doing that and <laughs> you can do that. Um, no, but honestly, this, these are your answers. Like, and that's what I'm the most excited for because all of these confusing storylines and all of these twists and turns, we get to finally, you know, it, it, like I had story time with Marlene and it ended my frustrations. Like you all will get story time with Pretty Little Liars and it will end your frustrations. And it will also, I think, truly be satisfying because it's not just about wrapping up the mystery. It's about leaving these girls and the people in their lives in a place, in like a, in a, in a beautiful and healthy space where we can say goodbye to them all. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't think we ever want to leave them in a, I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't think we ever want to leave them in a, in a position where we, where we don't know what lies ahead. Um, we don't want to live the rest of their lives for them, but I do think we want to send them off in a really beautiful way because it's been an honor to play them. Yeah. So there will be closure because we've now we live in an age mm. of sequels and spinoffs. Will this show, it gives you that closure or does it leave the door open for future installments or a movie or something? Um, it definitely leaves the door, it leaves the door open because uh, there's always more life to live. But I do think it, that there's closure because the, the, who AD is, is wrapped up. You know what I mean? Like you're given those answers. Does it mean that the girls suddenly like all die and go to heaven and then they're just like partying? No, um, you know, they're, they're going to have a life after this. And that's what the, the finale is about as well is it's about saying goodbye to them and sending them off on their different paths as well. Um, but it is interesting because at this point, I don't know what the purpose of a movie or like a reunion would be other than to just like have some awesome banter between like Hannah and Spencer, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, just like a reunion thing, but it, but it, but the mystery, I think they'll have to be a totally new mystery mm -hmm. and I don't know, I don't know how to top this one. It's pretty good. Yeah, good. Well, you know, speaking of life after something. What mm -hmm. is your life going to look like after Pretty Little Liars? What are your plans and maybe your hopes or dreams? Um, I'm sharing my hopes and dreams yeah. today. I'm so excited. Um, no, I know I, you're doing a, working on a movie though, right? Or you shot a movie. I you. just wrapped a film awesome. in Toronto. It was very cold. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, and I got to shoot it with my now husband. I almost said my boyfriend. Um, I, so yeah, so that was crazy. Got married. Uh, we shot, we went on honeymoon. Then we shot a film together. Didn't kill each other. So things are going well. Um, I'm very, very excited for it. I think it's going to be a beautiful film. And then I'm super excited because I also am a writer and um, I've, had a great time sort of creating worlds and producing things as well. And so I got to write and act in and produce my first feature film. Yeah. Um, it's really exciting. It's called Feed and it's gonna be released this summer. And it's about a deeply personal story to me. So I'm really, really excited to share that with everybody. Um, and then walking around the streets of New York, like um, honestly, my, like my hopes and dreams, I would love to get back on the stage. Yeah. I really miss it so, to see so that. much. That's amazing. <laughs> You're like theater. Um, oh, theater. Yeah. Well, that's that great. Be. I can't wait to see what you do next, and I can't wait to see Fee. That sounds awesome. Thank you. Um, but I want to open it up to some fans. Yes, please. Questions. 
There you go. Hello. Um, my question is, I know you directed an episode of PLL. Mm -hmm. And do you like directing or acting better? And do you want to pursue not only acting, but producing and directing also? Yeah, as I was saying, I, def I definitely do. I think both of my parents are creators. They're writers and directors and producers. And they, ta they taught me at a very young age that you can't wait around for somebody to give you a role. Look, it's wonderful. Everybody wants you know, uh, Darren Aronofsky to be like, you, let's do this. Um, but you, but that's not always gonna happen. And I think like Britt Marling is a really incredible example of somebody who was like, I'm not gonna wait around for, to play somebody's girlfriend. Uh, I'm gonna create my own world. And I think that's something that deeply resonates with me because I love telling stories and I love building relationships. And so I will definitely continue writing and directing and producing, whether it's more films or whether it is television. I just, I feel like I wanna, I wanna have a long career and I know that that, that can't always be in front of the camera, you know? You can't play everybody because God, I'd get sick of your face. <laughs> I can't wait to see what you do next. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Who's next? Uh, hi. Hi Paige. <laughs> um, well, you're a huge inspiration to a whole bunch of people, including me, uh, for writing and acting and now directing and producing too. I was wondering if you had any advice and what people who want to be an actress and, or a writer, like what they can expect. Um, yeah, I would say for me, what was really important, there's some people who just walk out of the womb and they feel comfortable acting. I had to fall on my face a lot and I still am falling on my face. I just had a job where I fell on my face for seven years as Spencer. Um, you know, it's, it, for me, it's about putting yourself in an environment in a laboratory style um, learning experience. So for me, that was going to theater school. Um, and I, I got my BFA from USC School of Theater, which I loved, and I loved my classmates, and I'm still friends with every one of them. And what we did while we were in school was continue to work together. Um, you know, we, we would do a play with the school and then we would be rehearsing a play outside that we would do in a warehouse. And when I was on Pretty Little Liars, I would write short films for us to do together. And then, you know, now my director and my best friend just directed Feed, my feature film. So it's like, to me, the two best things that you can do are get yourself in a situation in which you can fail and that's okay, because that's where you're gonna learn the most and surround yourself with creative, like-minded people and work with them because there's nothing better than working with your friends. They, you know, not only can they call you on your BS, but they can also love you and support you better than anybody else can. And it's a vicious industry. It's frankly gonna, it sucks most of the time. But if you have your friends around who are like, no, that was really good work, that not so much. Or like, you know, you have spinach in your teeth. Um, like, it's just good. So that's what I would say. Go to school and work with your friends. Thank you so much. Thank you. Nice. We have time for one more. Here Hi. Hello. If there is an uncomfortable part of filming, what would that be about, like, overall, the whole, so the whole show? The whole show, the most uncomfortable? No, no, I won't. I won't. Oh, yeah, besides the whole, like, spoiler thing. Um, um, sex scenes are pretty weird. Yeah, they're the worst. They're the worst. You got a bunch of people staring at you. You've got like weird covers on your boobs. You have to film it a few times. Oh, hours. And let me tell you, nobody stays fresh. You know what I mean? Like you're under hot lights and people are like coming in and like doing weird, like they're like putting makeup on like your butt, like anywhere on your body, like your butt. Like it's so weird. So first of all, you're just being like touched a lot and like, you know, you have to like stand still or like not eat or like drink water for a while because you're just like, I'm just so tired. <laughs> um, but, it, but, but those are always the funniest experiences too because after you've had sex scenes with somebody like I have with Keegan for like seven years, um, you, get, you get so weird and because you have to, you have to joke. You have to joke around, you know, like it can't, like I, I know that other people are like, I have real feelings for my, you know, for the person that I did this sex scene with, or like, I don't know, I've heard those rumors where like, it's not fake, you know what I mean? I'm like, dude, we've been together for seven years, uh, kissing you is like kissing my brother sometimes, please don't eat the garlic bread, please. Um, but, we, but we always had a lot of fun, so it was like, the, the, the sex scenes at once could be the most awkward, but they were also a total blast, because we were just Looney Tunes. Thanks for such an amazing show. Thank you. Thank you for watching and supporting it. Yes, thank you so much for being here. We can't wait to see how it ends. At least I can't. Yeah. I'm sure you guys can't either. But once <laughs> it ends, it ends.
I'm sad, oh. but thank you again for being here. We can't wait to watch, and good luck with everything in your future. Thank you so much. Thank you for Thanks, having guys. me. Thank you guys for coming today.